Welcome back gamers, welcome back game designers. We are here with Alistar's Journey. That is right, that is no longer Bullets from Hell. Uh, we have updated the name so that way we can make a little bit more sense out of what's going on. Um, now who is Alistar? Alistar is our wizard friend. As our story artist gets a little further on, we'll be able to dive into that a little bit more. Right as soon as you boot up the game, the game now shows you a end of user license agreement. The reason we have made this now instead of later is because we have made an alpha. We now have an alpha demo for you guys to enjoy. Uh, you guys can go to the link in the description below and fill out uh, the survey after you're done uh, playing the game so that way we can get kind of an idea of what we need to work on. We very much appreciate any bit of help that comes out of that. Moving right along, I would like to start going over some of the new content that we have for you guys. Now keep in mind, any of the new content we're going to be showing off today will not be showing up in the demo. The demo is limited to only four levels, in which all of four of those we've gone over except for one, and that is our mountain level. Now before diving into each of the new enemy types and things like that, I definitely want to talk about some of the new uh, things that are going to be going on in the screen. In our lower left corner, we have moved our entire health bar and all other stats over to this left corner. It's much more compact, uh, looks a little bit better for everyone. Uh, now you can actually see the health, the mana, without having to bring your eyes from one side of the screen to the other. Following up with that, uh, the uh, health bar now will flash and the mana bar will flash when it is used or hurt. It's identifying, hey, something's going on here. Along with our changes to our UI, we have now added a new animation for the player for when the player gets poisoned. Now the only time you're going to get poisoned in the mountain level is when the goblin alchemist actually throws out his poison. So now getting into the enemies, the goblin alchemist actually shoots out three different poison bolts when he attacks. Each of them track down the player as well, so as soon as it catches on, hey there's a player nearby, the uh, projectile will slow to a slower speed and then spin towards the player until it hits them. If the player is dodged for a total of 5 seconds, the poison ball will disappear. To follow up with that, we have our new Fire Demon. Our Fire Demon is a triple shot character as well, but he shoots at different times. Instead of all three of them coming at the same time, he'll shoot, shoot, and then shoot. When this happens, it spawns at different areas. It could be either at the top, middle, or bottom spawner. Uh, very similar to how the player shoots in triple shot, the fire demon will shoot in that kind of same category. Um, but there's nothing too crazy to note about the fire demon other than that and a little bit extra health uh, from the base value enemies. Uh, and then Goblin Alchemist is actually one of the lower health enemies, so taking him out is going to be kind of easy, but he does do quite a bit of damage if you let him. Last, we have our Orc, our Orc Charger. This is a melee charger that uh, has a decent amount of health, uh, one of our tankier enemies, uh, but they don't have any ranged attacks. After a certain amount of time, they'll just charge after the player. Uh, the Orc will then swing to attack. The player will take damage and get pushed back at the same time. This is our Tracer pickup. You can see it's red form right here. And when you pick it up, it will replace your double or triple shot with the Tracer shot. Uh, note that the Tracer shot does shoot slower than anywhere else, but when you do shoot it, it does track the enemy to a good range, actually. Uh, and then when it does track them down, it'll chase them until it deals damage. The damage is the same as your standard attack, so it's slow, tracking, there's benefits there. Um, 
based on our alpha test, we've already gotten some reviews saying that the tracer shot needs some extra speed up. Don't worry, that'll be coming soon. As the environmental hazard for our level, we have this hail coming down uh, from the sky. You'll see it show up on the first and second round. The third round will not have the snow or hail uh, coming down from the sky. Each one does 10 damage, but there's always a nice little area for you to hide uh, so you don't have to take the damage. Uh, note that the enemies do not take damage or are stunned or anything like that from the hail. Last we have our Orc Chieftain, which is the same thing as the Orc, except he also has a ranged attack. And during those ranged attacks, it is a high damage weapon, but it's easier to dodge. And when he does attack with his charge, he brings two other Orcs with him, primarily actually to intimidate the player. Uh, but when you actually pay attention to how the Orcs attack and whatnot, uh, they charge after the players, so the other two orcs are only there for show. They do actually have their own attack and damage animations, uh, but they just don't have the opportunity to be in those areas when the player is there. Um, now, the orc chieftain's a little harder to dodge than the orc counterpart, uh, as it should be, because he is the boss. So... Keep your eye out for uh, some hard uh, charging from our Orc Chieftain on his dog companion. After the mountain level, you're going to be able to uh, watch the exit uh, menu show up now. So you actually see you have 10 seconds to kill out the uh, chest and go ahead and gather all uh, items you can to move to the next level. In the volcano level, we'll be dealing with uh, three enemies, two of which you've already seen before, but slight twists on how they function, as well as a wall of fire and our boss, Alpha Magma. To start with, we have our Magma Demon. Now, this is the same thing as the Fire Demon from Mountain Level, except it has two big things that are different. One on the third shot, it does a extra boost of damage, it does the larger fireball, which does more damage. And on taking damage, it actually has a damage resistance value. Uh, so not just will it take less damage and have more health, it'll deal more damage. So this is just a harder version of the same thing you've already had to deal with. Following that, we have the scorpion, which is a, another charger style enemy. Uh, but in this case, when it hits you, it does damage over time. It actually does a poison value to go with that. Uh, and it has two different hitboxes, one for its base uh, front area, and second is for the tail area. The front takes less damage as it has the uh, harder uh, chitin armor. Last is our Pyro Mage. Our Pyro Mage is the same thing as our original Swift enemy. Uh, but in this case, the swift enemy has the small fireball, this one has the larger fireball, which means it does a little bit more damage. Next is our wall of fire. Our wall of fire is these black lines you're going to be seeing across the map right now. We're working on the sprite image for those. The wall of fire is does damage while you're in it, and a little bit after you're out of it. So, it does a little bit of a damage over time. It's not heavy damage, but it's enough that you definitely don't want to sit there in it. The final component to the volcano level is our Alpha Magma boss. And inside this battle, you're going to be dealing with a fire-breathing wolf. And that fire-breathing wolf is going to shoot at you five times with a deadly fire, and then after that, he's going to charge you. When he charges you, he goes invisible during this time. You can see his eyes and feet still, so you get kind of an idea where he's at. He charges. Once he's done charging you, 
he, instead of walking back, he teleports back to his original starting point, which makes him slightly different than the Charger boss, but not by a whole lot. Anyway, that completes the Volcano level. Before going over the last level I want to talk about, I want to bring up some changes that have been done to the Crypt level. So for starters, we mentioned the Miasma in the last video, but we actually are, it is now working. So uh, you can now see that on the screen, uh, take some damage uh, over time. So as soon as you touch it, the Miasma disappears and the damage over time incurs. Also, we have a new enemy, which is our Poison Gargoyle, and our Kamikaze enemy now drops a bomb rather than just explodes himself. Give me a little bit more time to kind of get out of dodge in case something happens. You know, boom boom, something kind of happens. Um, the last difference in the crypt is the final boss. Now, in this video, I have realized that the boss is not doing exactly what it's supposed to do, but you'll see the wizard and the druid work perfectly fine. The others are not. What ends up happening is that the mirror boss will change to whoever you are currently playing as, but will not change after you die. Whatever you become, its stats change too. So if you're playing knight, it actually gains a damage resistance value uh, and has the knight attack for its basic, and after so many times, it'll shoot out a knight of. Uh, sword slash or if you're playing wizard it'll eventually throw out a fireball or if you're playing the druid it'll uh, shoot out lightning so and so forth um, the health never changes but the attack speed the abilities uh, and resistance values will all constantly change as well as the speed value now, unfortunately, I couldn't show you our final level of the game, which is the castle level. Um, I do have footage of it. You're looking at it right now. Uh, the downside is, um, which you'll also see, uh, the level is not currently ready to be played. Uh, it has uh, missing enemies and things like that. So we're working on it. Uh, the final level is in its workings, and you can get kind of an idea of what we're looking to do with it right here. But sure enough, as all good games have, we need a tutorial. We need to teach you guys how to play the game. Now, if you've been paying attention to the videos in the past, you get kind of the idea. But in case you didn't, uh, we actually have a full-blown tutorial with uh, its own five waves. Um, and it actually has a good way of just teaching uh, players what buttons to hit, how to dodge enemies, uh, what you're looking at on the screen, and things like that. Um, the tutorial, we've already been told by some of the alpha testers that the words on the screen flash by a little too quickly. Um, so we are working on that as well. So keep in mind, everything's working together, coming together. Um, but at least until further knows, you guys can actually play the alpha test with a tutorial to learn how the game is meant to be played um, without any cheats and things like that, because that's all we ever use. So this kind of helps you guys and us kind of relearn the game uh, to where it's supposed to be played. Well, that's actually it for uh, this developer update. I uh, just want to let you guys know I appreciate you guys following the videos, keeping up with them. I really appreciate anyone that's actually gone out of their way to download the game, playtest the game, and then review the game afterwards so we can see if this game's actually a good game to be played. Right now, the alphas on PC will be making the mobile content probably for our next video next month. I don't know just yet if uh, we're going to be able to get that done or not. We haven't started it yet. Uh, but as soon as we get that started, then we can actually see if it's working on mobile. And then we'll actually have our beta test on mobile as well. Hopefully, if everything goes well, 
we'll be able to demo our castle level next uh, on our next video, and we'll be able to demo um, maybe our new game mode. We don't know just yet, um, as none of this stuff has actually been started other than castle. Uh, but we do have great intentions for where this game's going to be going past the storyline. Uh, so stay tuned, and we'll be glad to let you guys know. Thank you for watching, thank you for liking, thank you for commenting, subscribing, all the good YouTube stuff. Uh, just appreciate you guys having, you know, sticking around. So, thank you.